Hello, everyone! Welcome back to Charmed Rewind! Wiki, wiki, wiki! Phelan, you excited to do some more Charmed Rewind tonight? Uh, yeah, more excited for this than I would be if a uh, new Charmed was still going. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> maybe new Charmed just made us appreciate the nuance of old Charmed. Yeah. At least during, this is during one of the seasons where it's like, it's fine. It's not like the later seasons where it's like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can see some of the the later cruddy charm <laughs> seeping through at this point. But it's still, there's still a bit more <laughs> effort <laughs> than later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, we did another uh, poll on Patreon, uh, this time around, it was all just random number selects. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, out of the, uh, numbered episodes, uh, whatever was picked was on the poll. And, uh, the winner was actually a tie. There was two episodes that won. And, uh, the first one, uh, is Cheaper by the Coven, which is a uh, season six, I think, or something. One of the later seasons, <laughs> anyway, about uh, his wickening and then the girls are turned into children. And I remember it being just insufferable. <laughs> and uh, we also had uh, They're Everywhere, uh, which is a season two episode. And that's the one that we're covering tonight. Mm. Uh, season two, episode seven, uh, where young Misha Collins shows up. Uh, there's a tablet. Uh, there's some demons with some pointy fingers. Um, but There's because there was a tie, Deanmans, Deanmans, yeah, yeah Dean the year of the Deanmans, <laughs> yeah. Also works since Misha Collins is there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Ooh, we've got some supernatural stuff here. <laughs> um, because it was a tie, we're gonna do both episodes, uh, but we're doing the other one a different night. <laughs> we'll do cheaper by the coven another day when we're feeling stronger. But uh, I'm just glad that we're covering one, not from a later season. But first, I wanted to tell people about. So I didn't realize this uh, because I missed the email about it or something um but we, apparently since march we've been on itunes <laughs> Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! so if people want to leave us some itunes reviews that would be great um and we do have a small handful of them which are uh which are all very nice um <laughs> well all but one <laughs> <laughs> so there's like um four or five star reviews which are uh really cool thank you to critic sean uh one plus one star jammer radio and gonna live life uh, which all left great reviews, but no thanks to Dean Girl Forever eighty five. <laughs> I do want to read this Dean by Dean Girl Forever. Still in the year of the Deanman. Still in the year of the Deanman. Okay, so the reason I'm calling this one out particularly <laughs> is because um, this was for an episode of Charmed Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, they did not like us making fun of Supernatural. <laughs> so here's what they wrote. And this was uh, 727-2020. One star. <laughs> not a fan of the podcast. Supernatural is better. <laughs> well, I didn't care for the supernatural bashing from this, and you guys are wrong, and Sam and Dean Winchester are better heroes, and the charmed ro Roboot is trash. Roboot! <laughs> supernatural is the better show, and it lasted 15 years to prove it. <laughs> the reboot had no right to make fun of it. See, you guys are lame. Did they even watch and listen to our podcast about it, or they just didn't like the Charmed episode that made fun of Supernatural? <laughs> it was like a light parody. They weren't even saying, like, Supernatural was bad. They were just yeah. making jokes about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you would like to leave your own Supernatural review <laughs> on our... Uh, iTunes page. We're under Charmed Rewind at the moment. Uh, it'll probably be back under Charmed Hard with a Vengeance when the new season comes back, whenever that happens to be. So never. Uh, so never, yeah. Oh, hopefully never. I, look, I ain't looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I heard that January they're planning on doing new episodes. Mm. We'll see if that actually happens. I think that's being a little bit too... Uh, jumping the gun there as far as coronavirus goes I, I would not want people filming at the moment but yeah we'll see anyway phelan you ready to jump into this episode of charmed the og am i ever <laughs> okay so um this episode they're everywhere uh possibly one of the worst titles right <laughs> yeah it doesn't say much about anything 
It's just it's just supposed to be because Phoebe has a line in the episode later when they're talking about how there's a lot of warlocks around. She goes, "Oh well, they're everywhere." <laughs> It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a play on words. No. It's not clever. It doesn't sound good. It really has nothing to do with the episode's contents. It kind of feels like even they were like, this is kind of middle of the road, right? Like, <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> we have to get 22 out of season. I guess. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's weird. It's pretty cause... early on to run out of ideas, though. Yeah, there's some attempts here where it seems like they're trying more, especially more than later, where it's like, you know, they cast Dean Norris as one of the demons, so it's like, you can tell he's trying to make his character intimidating in this, versus, like, later where it's all just, oh no, some generic sort of young guy who's the demon, or a margoil, or something of that degree, where it's what just was like, his, like what was his character's name, know. though? <laughs> what's his character's name? I'm gonna look it up. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Collector number one and collector, collector number two. Number... Or uh... his undercover name. We don't know if this is his real name, but when he was pretending to be a human, he was Dr. Stone. Yeah, uh, Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a lot of the awkwardness here, though, comes from the fact that this is very early into season two. So the show doesn't really know exactly what they're doing yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of shows, season one is kind of the, the test run, just kind of see what works and it's forming into something. Season two is like, now we we have something, but now what what can we do with the premise that we have and kind of yeah. hone it into something? It's kind of funny when you see, like, you know, just a one-off demon in this show being played by someone of note at all. Because it seems yeah. like Charm just, like, does a random filler thing for them and then they get almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times it's people who are, like, basically promoted extras yeah, with the acting like to match. Yeah, like <laughs> Margoyle. Excuse me. Margoyle was Shaw in National Treasure. Yeah, Excuse very me. True. <laughs> he was in and the Dark Knight as Shoe Shine Man. Bargoyle I think he's or whoever the one after that was. <laughs> the rotating door of demons who took over magic school, whoever the next one was. Yeah. Occasionally, if they knew they were going to recur, they would get someone occasionally. Yeah, that would be someone. someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in the last season or the seventh season, they had that guy from The Mummy. Mm -hmm. his name. They had him playing like the big wig. They had one of the elders right. was John Delancey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they they James, James Avery. <laughs> Avery as one of the elders, too, which I just wanted yeah. him to throw one of the charmed ones off the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Just like they ask him a dumb question, it cuts to a far shot of the bridge. Ah! <laughs> well, since we're talking about, like, uh, known names, this one is, like, a reverse, right? Misha Collins is the guest star in this episode, but that was before he was a big name. Mm -hmm. But he's the, the main guest star on this, so yeah. we get to see him very young mm -hmm. and not doing yeah. his, like, gravelly yeah, voice. Not doing his gruff voice. He's just like, hey, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, it's me, Misha Collins. <laughs> <laughs> we need to destroy this future tablet. <laughs> he's a pretty boy, and he's got like um, he's got um, highlighted hair too. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot more subtle highlights than we're used to from the late nineties, yeah. early two no thousands. Michael but... Cole highlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frosted it's not the douchebag <laughs> frosted tips, but it's definitely lightened. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. I'm used to him talking like this. Yeah. So it was the same with Jensen Ackles, though. He didn't used to talk like Batman. Even the beginning of Supernatural, mm -hmm. he had like a normal ass voice. And yeah. slowly it became this. Sammy, Sammy, what are you doing down here? What are you doing to the bunker? Sammy, Sammy, we got some secrets. We got to hold some secrets, Sammy. <laughs> Let's lean against the car and talk about it. I'm going to quiver my chin. Real men don't cry. <laughs> this must be the year of the demon, but really it was the two-parter of the demon. <laughs> All right, if we don't get started, we're ten minutes in. We need to start this actual episode. <laughs> okay, so it starts out at a museum. 
there's a tour guide talking about this tablet uh, that is a map to the Akashic records. Um, they contain uh, information about significant events throughout all of time, so it can tell the future. Um, anyone who could get their hands on it uh, is going to have a lot of power, um, but the tablet that's the map to it is not decipherable. They can't, they can't translate it. Yeah, this guy, like, I don't know if he's a professor or just someone who works at this museum, he goes, everyone from Hera to Hitler's wanted to decipher this thing. <laughs> I was like, Hera? So we were just <laughs> dropping in Hera, I guess, was real? <laughs> maybe he knew something, you know, maybe yeah. he was also uh, into the supernatural. He has a backstory, he's a witch, and he was trying to figure out what was going on, but the Charmed Ones got there first. <laughs> Yeah, so a young Misha Collins is hanging out uh, by the case with the tablet in it, writing some notes, trying to translate it himself. We follow him as he goes to the hospital, which is just a room in a house pretending to be a hospital. Yeah. He's visiting his father, who's in a catatonic state, and his dad just looks so bored with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just, he looks like he watched, like, the last season of Charmed. He's <laughs> 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 dad i translated all of it until it's in my head and i'm gonna figure this out for you dad <laughs> for the last time <laughs> stop coming to my room and telling me about this last time just pull the plug <laughs> ash phoebe <laughs> that's why he looks like that because yeah. apparently <laughs> Phoebe, as of this episode and this episode only, volunteers at the hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this threw me for a second. I was like, wait, Phoebe worked at a hospital? You know, just this episode. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that there was one episode she worked at a hospital and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but she she was in there talking to him in his catatonic state, like, ah, you won't believe my day, and then I had to save innocent, and then it sucked, and then <laughs> and he's like, oh, someone save me. <laughs> Somebody save me. <laughs> he saw all of Smallville, and this is where he ended up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all supernatural. We'll get everyone angry at us. <laughs> Sorry, this is the Supernatural Bashing Podcast. He saw, it was for 15 years, <laughs> and that means it's good, just like how Baywatch was on for 11 years. That means it was a really, really, really critically acclaimed program. <laughs> and the Big Bang Theory, so good. Oh, get mad at me! <laughs> the Supernatural started with a Big Bang. <laughs> the Germans have a term for what you're feeling. Weltschmerz. Uh, yeah, so uh, one episode volunteer Phoebe is there. Um, she gets a vision off of Misha Collins where he's attacked uh, by a demon with a pointy finger. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into the aliens from uh, Scary Movie 3. Just the pee comes out of the yeah. finger. Did Dean Norris reveal he's a demon already or not yet? He didn't. She just saw the vision of him being attacked. Oh, okay. I thought it was a dagger, but it must have been his finger. Yeah. Because that's what they attack them yeah, with. magic pointy fingers. It's kind of vague what's going on, but that's what it is. Okay. Uh, back at the manor, uh, Prue walks in and she's like, well, Jack's a warlock. And then I have to remember for a second who Jack is. <laughs> <laughs> Just Lachlan Monroe. Yeah, Lachlan Monroe had a uh, recurring role on the show briefly as Prue's love interest. Um, <laughs> very weird character. Yeah. I remember this being the weirdest thing they did with him. Mm -hmm. He was sort of like, he was a minor love interest. I don't think it ever got very serious before he kind of phased out. Yeah, honestly, it would have been better if he'd stuck around longer, because he is amusing. <laughs> yeah, he's um, yeah, he's a good actor. He's in, like, everything ever made. I think he has one of the <laughs> longest IMDb lists ever. Hmm. Um, but everyone remembers him as uh, the Burger King in, in The Name of the King 3, clearly. <laughs> yeah, the best role ever. <laughs> as in The Name of the King 2. Oh, it's 2, right. 2 was the one that had uh, Sh Dolph Sugar Lundgren. Crisp, yeah. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah. And the third one was the guy from prison break yeah right <laughs> yeah you might also recognize him from riverdale um but he's been in just a ton of things so she thinks that he's a warlock because she was walking around she saw him one place and then he was in another place she thinks he he can't go that quick between these different places and uh, piper so she, could not be less interested yeah piper's like yeah i got my own staff <laughs> i'm packing clothes why is she packing clothes for a wedding rehearsal i don't know they're going to a wedding rehearsal 
So they even have you don't even have to wear your outfits for wedding rehearsals, right? You're just no. going there to go over. Yeah, that's all that goes on at this. Like, is she going overnight to this wedding rehearsal? Like, why Apparently, is she packing a bag? Yes. Yeah, well, neighbor Dan was saying we should even go early to have more time. I'm like. And they were going overnight because they're like, uh, Prue says something about, oh, you're going to have separate beds or together. And Piper's like, to be determined. (laughs) This sounds like hell. This sounds like hell going to an overnight wedding (laughs) rehearsal. (laughs) No, thank you. What a romantic date, neighbor. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, apparently it's no one that Piper knows either. So it's just, hey, you want to come with me to some people that I sort of know as wedding rehearsal? Yeah, neighbor Dan is taking her to a wedding rehearsal from so- just for someone he knows <laughs> as a romantic date. Um, Prue's like, Piper, you could confirm if, uh, if, if Jack is a warlock because you're a warlock magnet. And she's like, oh, I'm never going to get over that Jeremy thing. They reference the pilot. <laughs> Jeremy, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> Someone rings the doorbell. Uh, Piper pissily answers it. She's like, well, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's so busy. Look, she doesn't have time for this. It's so How sad. long does it take this you is... to pack something for one night? <laughs> what the fuck? This is, this is still season two, and Piper is already so annoyed with having to do anything. <laughs> like, I'll get it. <laughs> I don't want to do anything to do with magic. I don't even want to answer the door. <laughs> uh, well, who is it at the door but the greasy butt crack poo flap himself? <laughs> um, he wants to leave earlier so they can relax and they awkwardly laugh. Uh, Piper has visible contempt. <laughs> yeah, like there's real hate behind that laugh she gives him. <laughs> this episode has a lot of awkward screening. Um as evidenced by the uh the cat <laughs> yeah their cat stock footage very the, very bad <laughs> very poor yeah the, yeah they they show their cat uh in the corner i think the cat was just named cat right like k-a-t or something maybe or kit kit <laughs> kit cat kit tell me what the charmed ones are doing <laughs> i'm gonna look it up I right now that, i bet it was named <laughs> i bet it was named kit Kit, yes. Oh. Kit is their familiar, their cat familiar. Um, so they show the cat in the corner. It is screened in very badly. They use this shot twice yeah, uh, to show the cat hissing. Shot. Yeah, to show the cat hissing at neighbor Dan. This is because early on they had the cat in season one, and this was an important thing in the show. Like the cat had like a collar with their like uh, little uh, trifecta on it. And uh, the cat died sometime during season one. And instead of getting another cat that's the same breed, which would make sense, I don't know why they didn't have more than one cat to begin with, because usually they have more than one animal to do different things. Like, this one likes laying down a lot, this one does tricks, this one walks, or whatever. But instead of getting another cat, they just screen it in Mm -hmm. and do it badly or don't acknowledge it exists until, like, seasons later. (laughs) Yeah, there's this long period where they never acknowledge the cat, then suddenly there's some plot where it turns human and dies or something. <laughs> I think the cat didn't... I think the cat was, like, rewarded by going to heaven or something. Or was or... that it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. It might have just... Reward was being human for being good or something. And then she die. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I don't remember if how it, that if went. If it had anything to do with the charm ones protecting her, she probably died. Yeah. <laughs> if they needed the cat, it, I can understand maybe they're like, it's a pain in the ass to work with the cat, we're just not getting another one. But if they needed to be for that plot specifically, have that cat be there, get another cat of the same breed and just have one shot of it and then just don't yeah. keep it around. That's all you gotta do. It's so obvious because there's no cat in any other shots. It's just this one bad shot they cut to of the screen cat <laughs> why did they have the cat screen to begin with what did they screen the cat for in in the first place before it died I don't know. maybe they just cut it out of another shot like and then they just stuck it in there it's possible you think Ugh. it had just been in the house in the first place then uh they didn't have a shot of it there i guess uh but because the cat's hissing at the butt the greasy butt crack poo flap uh they think maybe he's a warlock <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, you know how this, how well this relationship is going. Like maybe he's a warlock. And this is how you, you know you're you're reminded quickly that Piper does not have her little 
put her hands out and someone explodes powers because otherwise they'd be cleaning up neighbor Dan off their doorstep. <laughs> I'll clean it. She can't make Leo do it because he's not around yet or not around that much. Yeah. <laughs> Leo! We're not Leo. even together yet. Ah. Leo, clean up these scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they cut to the opening credits, uh, and then there's a bunch of establishing shots with a replacement sax song. <laughs> that yeah, sounds terrible. Real doofy. <laughs> so Prue and Piper are uh, hanging out with the uh, the book shadows, mm-hmm. which they've taken out from the attic because yeah. occasionally they used to do that. Yeah, it was allowed to get out of the attic. Amazing. I don't even think they go to the attic in this episode. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I don't remember them going to the attic. Mm. <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? Uh, so they're reading the Book of Shadows on the couch. Uh, they're trying to figure out if their love interests are warlocks. Uh, so they're going to cast a spell so they can hear their thoughts. Uh, but when they cast the spell, they end up hearing each other's thoughts as well. Wow. Uh, Piper is thinking about lipstick, I guess. <laughs> She's dreaming about lipstick. <laughs> Quit dreaming about lipstick and help me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all of this is going on, and she's like, ah, I can't believe that Prue borrowed my lipstick. Yeah, immediately Prue hears Piper whining about her borrow. <laughs> she doesn't care about the warlock thing, not on the forefront of her mind, the no. lipstick issue. Yeah. Who wrote this episode? Who it's wrote like, this? <laughs> we set this up earlier, too, because Prue borrowed some shirt or something, too. Piper's already angry. This episode was written by Cheryl J. Anderson. Mm. who was a supervising producer on the show. Uh. She wrote 11 episodes, uh, including uh, that 70s episode, All Halliwell's Eve, Wrestling with Demons. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. She has uh, quite the resume. (laughs) Okay, so um, Phoebe comes home. And they don't tell her about this spell. They don't want to talk about the mind reading for some reason. (laughs) Why? Yeah, uh, probably because they feel like idiots. Because she's like, (laughs) hey, warlocks don't bleed, so why don't you just prick them? It's so easy. And and then they're like, oh, okay. Was this ever information they had before or after that warlocks don't bleed? I don't know. I don't remember this. I don't know why Phoebe knows it and Prue and Piper don't. Phoebe is apparently, like, the smartest one in this episode. She knows everything all the time, apparently, because she just does a lot of reading, is what she says. Apparently. This is also like Phoebe back when she wanted to help people too, so she's not really that annoying in this one. Yeah, Phoebe was pretty fine in this episode, I thought. Mm-hmm. Like she, like she wanted to help someone. Uh, she wasn't just focusing on her own shit all the time. And even when there's like a slight spark going on in a romance way, it's not like at the forefront of what's going on. She genuinely just wants to help him. Yeah, and his dad. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Because there's a point where they think they might have to sacrifice his dad to save him, and Phoebe's really pushing to try and save them both. It's like, wow, yeah. wanting to save people. That's nice. Maybe you should have kept right? this. If, the, if this was a laser, later season, she would just be like, oh, I know it's horrible, but we have to do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I'm going to miss my deadline if we save them both at the paper, and... I think the whole town might as well die if they don't get Ask Phoebe on time. I'm sorry, this is just the way it is. <laughs> Your dad's I, look, not I more important focus. than my column. I can't focus on this right now. I need to focus on me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this whole, I feel like the warlocks don't bleed thing is not something they kept. I don't remember if this was ever used before or after it. It but, should have um, been used. It, they, they acted like this was the first time that it's ever came up because, like, Piper and uh, Prue say that they didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And, first of all, why didn't Phoebe ever tell them this? If That, that would have been very helpful for them to know because they deal with warlocks all the time. But just as an aside, she's like, no, oh, they don't bleed. But I thought that Jeremy, Destroyer of Worlds, <laughs> uh, when, uh, when the, they did that spell where all the rose thorns came out of him or something he's like uh, pulling him out of his face he had a bunch of like blood on his face didn't yeah he? i think you're right it wasn't like profusely bleeding but it was definitely yeah, there blood. there was something <laughs> yeah and i don't know why they wouldn't because warlocks are just kind of evil witches witches bleed yeah it doesn't make if it bleeds you can kill it <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what i heard somewhere a wise <laughs> proverb <laughs> yeah 
I kind of like the idea, I guess, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense, just having this covert way to try and check for this. Yeah, there could have been something they could have used. Maybe not that, but there could have been some, like, warlocks have a distinct thing that you can tell. Yeah, and like, yeah, you see that tell once in a while, and then suddenly they realize they're in danger. Usually it's just because they're like, they found I am evil, so I'm really, really evil now. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> But I do like back at this point in Sharon where it's not like, oh, it's a warlock. Okay, Piper, wave your hands at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was a bit of a challenge going on here. Yeah. And they weren't just focused on random uh, shopping X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see because they confront Dean Norris and the other guy at the hospital. And there's a bit of a battle and they end up running from them because they're not ready to take yeah. them out right then. Yeah. One thing I noticed uh, during these uh, thought things is that uh, Shannon Doherty and uh, <laughs> Holly Marie Combs, somehow their acting gets worse in the voiceovers. <laughs> yeah, clearly they're not voice actors. Yeah, which is weird because like, I, I, I would think that like you have to do a lot of like ADR and looping uh, when you're working on shows like this. And so you have to like sink to your mouth and make it sound like you're saying the line on set. So I would think that they could at least do, like, thoughts as their characters, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily, like, an animated character or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but it sounds off. Sometimes with looping, they can still hear their original track before they deliver the dialogue to try and match it, so maybe that's why they couldn't do this that well. Maybe. I realize this is this is getting nitpicky. <laughs> <but> <laughs> Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. Okay, so um at Bucklands, that's uh Prue's where she works uh appraising art. Um Jack goes to see her in a tacky shirt and shorts. <laughs> she asks about work stuff and he doesn't seem to know. Uh, and in his thoughts, he's like, oh, what if she finds out that I'm lying? Uh, I just put people in graves. And uh, <laughs> if she finds out I'm lying, she's going to die. And he leaves and she's like, you're dying first. <laughs> yeah, I love she's immediately thinking about killing him. Oh, the romance is in the air. <laughs> you're going to die first, you asshole. <laughs> so dumb back at the manor uh neighbor dan uh visits piper and she freezes him he comes in the house she freezes him and uh pricks his hand and phoebe shows up while he's frozen and piper's like he's not bleeding and phoebe's like well of course he's frozen you idiot <laughs> he's yeah. not gonna bleed. remember when they were like doing the phoebe was kind of the dumb one of the group like apparently yeah. piper and prue are the dumb ones in this episode <laughs> and phoebe's the smart one Who's the one drinking dum dum juice this episode? <laughs> yeah, she cast a smart spell on herself, but now she's the one that's like studious, doing all the reading, knows everything that's happening, volunteers at the hospital, while the dum dum twins are just going around like, I think my boyfriend's a warlock. I'll <laughs> cast this spell, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like, and the exact same thing happens later. Like, Prue gets a uh, Piper to freeze Jack, and then pricks him and goes, <gasps> Stop bleeding! Stop bleeding! Yeah, she does the same <laughs> thing. And then Piper has the gall to yeah. be like, oh, he's frozen, idiot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would know that. <laughs> Pretty clever, Piper. <laughs> um, Pi what? Pretty clever. Pretty clever. <laughs> Uh, so Dan bleeds from his hand, and he doesn't think that's weird that he spontaneously started bleeding. Yeah, and then Piper goes, Ah, you're bleeding! <laughs> <laughs> like, she, she acts super happy about it, and he doesn't think uh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't think, he's just like, Oh, that's, anyway, are we gonna go, or what? <laughs> yeah, just spontaneously bleeding from my palm, and you're really happy about it. Let's go! <laughs> Um, and more screened in cat. The cat hisses at him again from green screen corner. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Um, oh, Piper hears Phoebe checking out Dan's butt, and she's very upset at this. <laughs> <laughs> the poo flap is hers and hers alone. Because <sighs> Leo's still, I think he's dead at the moment. I don't know. <laughs> I think he died at the end of season one before he comes back or something. <laughs> or, I don't remember what's going on with him. Bloody Leo chunklets somewhere. Yeah. 
Uh, Phoebe and Piper go to find Misha Collins at his apartment, uh, where he's being attacked by Dr. Dean Norris and his friends, and they got pointy fingers that suck brains out. <laughs> he's like, this, this is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Dean! They got pointy fingers! They're attacking me! <laughs> Sammy! Sammy, we gotta get the pointy finger demons! <laughs> See, what Dean Norris didn't know was he needed to get a popcorn bag and throw it at him, <laughs> and it would gravely injure him. Yeah, everyone knows Angel's uh, biggest weakness is if you throw them into a popcorn bag lightly. We found out with that brunette lady. <laughs> and then Crowley's like, I betrayed him. I betrayed the popcorn. I betrayed this. <laughs> Pops one in if his any, mouth. <laughs> if anyone needs me, you can find me at the Dean Norris Pizzeria at this street in the basement. <laughs> That's where I run hell. <laughs> Still making uh, fun of Supernatural. <laughs> I'll, I'll give Supernatural this. It never had demons with stupid, stretchy, pointy fingers. <laughs> with CGI the, oh, the fingers we, out. We did like... stop watching it. Could have happened in one of the later scenes. <laughs> yeah. Dean Girl 85 or whatever your name is, if you're still listening, <laughs> do you know? Did this happen? Let us know in your next one star review. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this is a combination of like, um, they've they've stretched the image out with the finger, and they do have some prosthetic fingers they give them <laughs> with long, pointy. This is so dumb. Yeah. Though it's not the worst effect in the episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Piper freezes the demons, but she unfreezes them for Phoebe to kick them in the face. <laughs> yeah, this is when Phoebe Why did a bunch she... of kicks and stuff. Yeah, Phoebe used to know uh, some martial arts or some fighting moves uh, to, because she didn't have really an active power. Um I don't know why they didn't just leave them frozen and then have her like beat the shit out of them and yeah. then unfreeze them and then they're already beaten up. Yeah. Cut their heads off. You can prick them while they're frozen, so why can't you beat them up? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But she unfreezes them. And Misha Collins is like, don't worry, I have a gun. (laughs) Yeah. It blows them both away. And that's the end of the episode. (laughs) I love this. This is one of the few times where someone's just like, I have a gun. I'm going to take out the demons with a gun. He loves his gun. Twice in this episode, he's like, no, no, I think this gun is really going to work out for me. (laughs) Um, but the gun doesn't work, so they have to run away. Yeah, he does blow them both away, but they're just kind of like, oh, get up and the bullet holes disappear. Yeah. Ineffective. <laughs> Misha Collins uses gun. It's ineffective. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, back at the manor, uh, Misha's given the whole rundown to them. Uh, his father is the way he is because uh, the demon sucked his mind out uh, to try and get information about this tablet. He was working on translating it. And uh, that's why he's in the hospital. So he's like in a coma or whatever. Yeah, he's catatonic. And uh, they, he wants to go get his dad and uh, save him from the demons. Thinks he's, they're going to come after uh, him. And uh, Phoebe's like, no, you can't go. So she flips him over onto his back. Yeah. And uh, then they smirk at each other for a while. <laughs> Everyone smirks too. It's so weird. Like Prue and Aww. Piper come in and they smirk about it too. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> for someone who's so worried about his dad, this seems like a weird moment for like flirty <laughs> jump on top of each other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, ah, Piper, freeze him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They freeze him. Um, and Prue comes home. Uh, so they tell Phoebe about the whole reading thoughts thing, and, uh, that's where Phoebe's like, oh, seems like warlocks are everywhere. (laughs) They (laughs) drop the title. Whoa. Terrible. (laughs) So Piper's gonna go with Prue to go test Jack. Apparently they have no urgency about this father thing. They're gonna go check out Lachlan Monroe. Go do the Um, other thing. Yeah, so they're like, let's go do that. Uh, but Phoebe has to get back into position on top of frozen Misha Collins. Yeah, which looks super bad. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Norris and his sidekick are talking about Misha Collins being protected by a time-freezing witch and Bruce Lee's little sister. <laughs> they were that impressed by these half-assed kicks. Yeah, uh, might be overselling that a bit, guys. <laughs> yeah, when I see Alyssa Milano, I think Bruce Lee's little sister. <laughs> Um, and then they do the greatest effect ever. What happens, Phelan? <laughs> <laughs> they 
jump cut them out of the scene with a <laughs> noise. It, it looks like a temp thing. Like, all right, yeah. <laughs> we'll put in the effect in the real sound effect later. But they, for now, they just disappear out and well, a little noise just to indicate, put in a real sound effect here later. <laughs> they ran out of money. They spent too much money on making their fingers go pointy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. And they have one scene in the episode where there's a fight going on where they repeatedly do it. So it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's too funny. Just, it looks like some, it's like, so something, uh, like, it looks like something like, uh, Jombie the Genie is doing some, like, effect and, like, <laughs> popping someone in and out, or, like, yeah. when would, would Mystery Science Theater would have, like, would have, like, Brain Guy pop people in and out of places, right. they would do that sound effect. <laughs> um, at Buckland's, um... Lachlan Monroe shows up, uh, Piper freezes him so Prue can prick his hands, and Prue it doesn't realize that he won't bleed either because she's a dum dum. And then and that's another when another Lachlan Monroe enters. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. The <laughs> twist. He I was love... twins all along. <laughs> I love he comes in while the other one's frozen and like does not notice at all. He just What's going on, guys? It's <laughs> pretty no. funny, isn't it? He's <laughs> like, oh, quick, Piper, freeze him too. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this is like a sitcom scenario, right? That yeah. like it turns out that he's twins and they were playing her the whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would he show up at his work and be doing his work too? If you're gonna do the like twin setup, at least let him know what's going on. If you're gonna pretend to do his job too. It seems like it was extremely pointless to have it happen at all, because it's just like, he came in to have a brief exchange with her and leave. Like, yeah. what's his brother's name? Because, like, yeah, it turns out the one in, like, the Hawaiian <laughs> shirt isn't Jack, it's... It's Jeff, I believe. Jeff. Jack and Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff is twin brother. And we never see Jeff again, by the way. No. I believe Lachlan Monroe still shows up, but Jeff, nowhere to be seen. Yeah. He's the, he, by the way, he works at a mortuary. That's why he was thinking about graves and dead yeah. bodies and stuff. <laughs> Jeff, the guy who works at a mortuary, wears like tacky shirts. Yeah. <laughs> so meanwhile, it was like Jack going to the mortuary to hang out with his girlfriend and then like comically messing up embalmings and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> The effect's not perfect, but, like, Lachlan Monroe does a decent job bouncing off the him who's not really there. <laughs> yeah, he does a pretty good job. The screening in, on that is not perfect, like you said, but I think they figured out people freezing okay by that point. So if they have, like, the two of them or double them or whatever, like, in screening people around them, they've figured out to make it look all right. Mm-hmm. Except for the Misha Collins thing was weird, but... <laughs> yeah. Like, when she gets on Misha Collins, it kind of makes me think of the cat shot again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Misha Collins, uh, he's talking to Phoebe, and... Uh, what did I write this down for? What am I even... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just more stuff about his dad. So they're talking, and uh, he's uh, he was saying that his dad was translating the text, so he wants to find out what happened, why these demons attacked him. And uh, Phoebe is like, how do I make this about me? <laughs> uh, she says she really envies him because her mom's dead, and her dad is still the deadbeat first guy. They haven't introduced the second guy yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too slightly nicer. Yeah. Who brought my ex-wife back from the dead? <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, uh, throughout this episode, they're really stretching to try and a attach their father issues with Misha Collins' dad, which mm -hmm. is not really the same thing. Like, they're like, you know, we should save his dad because at least he has a dad because our dad sucks. And they just keep <laughs> talking about it. And it's like, this is just kind of stretched pretty thin. I guess. I mean, I mean, it's nice that they have these moments, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, I feel like it's at least it's some trying something a little more than Charm does later. So it, but you're right. I mean, it's not the greatest. They aren't just talking about like relationship issues and sighing. It's relationship issues and dad issues. Yeah. <laughs> Prune Piper come home, uh, and they're like, "Guess now we'll go get your dad from the hospital." This wasn't a priority. It was the Jack twins. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this it's not like there's any sense of urgency that these demons yeah. might immediately go after him versus Jack who just uh, apparently appears in different places and thinks about dead bodies sometimes. Yeah, well there's these demons going around and then oh once in a while oh let's see what's going on Jack oh is neighbor Dan at the door again just to sack halt the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh look! Someone drain. Someone was drained at the hospital by the demons because they were dinking around. So that lady screwed. Yeah. Did she get her memories back? Did she get her mind restored before they killed them by the end? Who knows? Maybe they didn't care about that lady. Yeah, <laughs> nuts to her. <laughs> Uh, they go in to find his dad, uh, and the demons pop in and out multiple times until they hold Piper hostage with a knife. Uh, Phoebe uses a vase. <laughs> it's super effective. Oh, <laughs> but they manage to get the advantage. They pop out with the dad. Uh, the girls reveal to Misha Collins that they're witches. And he's like, you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all this other stuff, but witches, that's just a step too far. <laughs> what did they talk about when they took him to their house the first time? He knows that they that Phoebe gets visions. She told him that before. Yeah. Uh, he clearly knows that there's some sort of like demons with pointy fingers coming after him. So they know, and mm. they're talking about these, th this text that foretells the future. Yeah. So like, there's all and, this other shit going but, on. Like, why did he go with them to their house earlier anyway the first time? <laughs> Like, hey, come know. with us to our house. It's like one of those classic TV things where nothing happened in between going from one location to the next. Yeah, they were just dead silent. <laughs> this is the end of all my faults! <laughs> uh, Misha Collins is like, I don't care what your plans are, I got my own plans. So he takes off, and Piper's like, he's pissing me off! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Piper's done. She's been helping too much. <laughs> I ain't got a wedding rehearsal to go to that I don't want to go to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she got to do that thing she hates. <laughs> uh, Phoebe follows Misha Collins. Here's his great plan. Here's here's the plan he had. All of his plans this episode are great. <laughs> he goes to the museum. He picks up a fire extinguisher. They walk over to the case where the tablet is, have a long conversation. <laughs> and then he smashes the glass. Picks up the tablet, smashes it on the floor in front of everyone. They get some looks. Security never shows up. No, no one does anything. They walk out very, <laughs> they saunter out casually. <laughs> Nothing happens. Nobody cares. There's no consequences. Never no. brought up again. Yeah. Like, there's there's, there's got to be cameras in there. Like, no. <laughs> nothing. No. <laughs> Do you think that's what happened after the episode? Like, he was arrested? <laughs> yeah to jail for breaking this priceless artifact. Why does no one care other than to look at him with their mouth open? Oh, he smashed oh, can he that, do that thing. Apparently it's very easy to go yeah. just destroy things in a museum and casually walk out. <laughs> just... <laughs> what was that? that? <laughs> Very lax security. They dubbed in yeah. someone going like, "Go get security." <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> nothing happens. If he casually walks out, I guess it's over. <laughs> if he goes to home base, we're screwed. <laughs> Which is just outside the museum, I guess. That's the end of the security zone. <laughs> you know what? The security guards are the ones from I Man. They just can't handle yeah. people casually walking outdoors. They're like, "I can't get them now." <laughs> it's like a crappy video is... game where you see like they're past the border where they can go. So you see the security running at him, to, but there's like an invisible field keeping them from one, <laughs> running past the museum. Like, oh, we can't get him. <laughs> Misha Collins is the master of casually walking outdoors and then no one could catch him in this episode because yeah. he does that later. He casually walks out and the girls like cannot catch up to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. All right, so so Piper and Prue are at the manor, and they're talking about their dad. Um, this conversation's okay; it's fine. They're talking about how they 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 have a deadbeat dad, and they want to help someone who has a dad that's there for them. Mm -hmm. um, Piper, uh, <laughs> we see the softer side of Piper. Um, <laughs> A little bit of humanity to her. She talks about the fact that she misses their dad, even though Prue is still very bitter about the whole thing. And she's like, ah, I, I miss who he could have been or should have been, but not dad himself. Mm -hmm. So it's some good character work. Uh, I just think that it's kind of a stretch connecting it to this particular thing. <laughs> yeah. 
then the dad can show up and they can forget which one had bigger issues with him than the other like new churned <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well look mel and their dad were playing online games together they're fine now <laughs> So they decide. They decide that the best way to solve this uh, and save the world is if they cast a spell to take the uh, information about the tablet out of Misha Collins' head. They never say what the spell is. It's never used in this episode because it all works out because of la di da di da or whatever. <laughs> uh, apparently, they maybe it's the spell that that uh, that Billy used to like take the memories out of her head that didn't work very well in that Kill Billy episode <laughs> about her sister. Maybe that's the spell. Uh, Prue just goes like, here's the spell right here. And they don't elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but happens. this... Yeah. But this is a problem. Because uh, if he if they take that out of his head, he won't have anything to bargain with, with the demons. Even though, like, how are they going to know? He just goes like, hey, undo this to my dad. And then, then I'll help you out. And then they do that and then get the dad. Like, I don't know why. Can they be that precise about taking the memories out? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they want to just make him amnesia and like have no memories. <laughs> yeah, because or... if they remove that, like maybe they, he would forget what's even going on at all. <laughs> they probably would have screwed it up. Probably. <laughs> uh, but who cares about any of that? Neighbor Dan's here! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop all this crap. I gotta talk to the neighbor again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Piper's just like, I still gotta get ready, you know, it's really, it's really hard to pack a bag and wear an outfit to go on this trip. <laughs> and he's like, okay, but I'm leaving at 6.30 sharp. He, he thinks, uh, something very confusing. He says, someday I'll make it through that damn door. Like, earlier in the episode. <laughs> you were already in the house, dummy. <laughs> he was inside the house earlier in the episode. Everyone in this episode's an idiot except Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phoebe is the smartest one in this episode, the most competent, and the least annoying. She, I don't think she did anything annoying in this episode. I don't think so, not really. Uh, yeah. This was like the Phoebe that, that was cool yeah. <laughs> before she became the a Phoebe shrew. Phoebe that could have been. <laughs> <laughs> You're living in a world of make-believe. The early days of Phoebe. Mm. Uh, the demons call Misha Collins, and they're like, Yeah, you want your dad? Come alone. Um, and so he, he's like, hey, I gotta go get some fresh air, kind of wanders out the door thinking the address that he's gonna go to, which, uh, Prue and Piper hear, and then he hasn't even shut the door yet, and Prue's like, Phoebe! Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't hear that, he just keeps, do 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 yeah. <laughs> He saunters out, and she runs in. Yeah. They cannot catch him on yeah, foot. Like, he's he's walking on park. foot. We gotta go, Yeah. <laughs> He's on foot, but they pull up to the park in their van. Yeah. So it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. How did they it, not catch up to him? There's no way. Like, I'm sure he didn't have a vehicle because they took him back to their house. So, like, <laughs> how did he get there first? <laughs> like, there's no way he wouldn't have just been a couple steps, like, down their driveway anyway yeah. by the time they went back outside. <laughs> They didn't even try either. They could have ran out the door and been like, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they didn't. They're like, oh, he's too far. Yeah. Yeah. Phoebe, he's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> they get there and uh, Phoebe's like, eh, imagine a dad who actually wants to be with his child. <laughs> The girls wander around the park for a while, set to pleasant music. This is weird. Yeah. Prue is attacked by a vicious peacock. A peacock shows up. <laughs> None of this means anything. It's just wasting time. Maybe it was Hera. It was <laughs> Yeah, she was looking for Hercules. <laughs> that had nothing to do with anything. Just no. randomly they're wandering to some pleasant music to kill time because the episode was short. Yeah. And then a peacock shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and then Prue goes like, eh, and then walks away. <laughs> um, Misha Collins confronts the demons, and he's like, yeah, you have my dad, but I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, we give up. Ooh. <laughs> patwang, patwang, he makes them dance. Yeah. This time he's like, the, yeah, I know it won't work on you guys, but I'll blow my own head off with the knowledge you want. So, do, so fix my dad or else. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't make me waste me. 
don't do it, he's serious. It turns into like um, blazing saddles when he holds himself hostage. <laughs> um, so they uh, restore the dad uh, and attack Misha Collins uh, and karate chop the dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as he gets his mind back. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the Deep Norse just teleports behind Misha Collins right after they restore his dad. He's like, oh, I told you, we're the ones really in charge. It's like, why don't you just do that immediately instead of bothering <laughs> to restore the dad first? No reason. And if they could restore the dad, are they giving the knowledge back to him that he had? Or do they already have it and they could just give it back and they also have that knowledge? I don't know. <laughs> You know, lots of questions. But apparently um, the dad's a okay after they do this. Yeah, he's fine. Phoebe saunters in <laughs> and gets drained like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, um, what's going on? Oops. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> she gets thrown on the ground, face down, unconscious. <laughs> Prue comes in, flings them away. Prue by far has the best power at this time, before Piper gets the explodey things. She's the one that can, like, fling people. Yeah, and, like, that's more interesting than just giving them an auto-win power. Yeah. I mean, Piper does have a very useful power. The freezing thing is very useful yeah, it's for a useful. lot of stuff. It's, but, just, uh, it's not overpowered like the explosion thing later. Uh, Piper comes in and freezes them. Uh, Prue... What? Oh, okay. Sorry, my <laughs> my notes. What? My Prue does what? Uh, my t my uh, thing auto corrected into something that's nonsense. So I was trying to figure out what I actually wrote. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Prue places them together when they're frozen. Yeah, <laughs> she like fl puts their bodies together so they're sucking each other's brains and they shrivel up. <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible warpy effects. So it's like <laughs> the top of his head gets all shrunken and his mouth grows first. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't they stop? I don't know. Maybe because they were they canceled each other out. They just couldn't stop because they were being zapped. Yeah, they were draining their memories as they were doing it, so they forgot how to stop. <laughs> oh, man. Prue says a pretty good line. They really shouldn't have given us the finger. <laughs> uh, everyone's okay. Phoebe and Misha Collins have forgotten some stuff, though. They don't really remember each other or what they've been doing the last few days. I think Phoebe says the last thing she remembers is their Halloween party. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, it's good for them that that's all it was and they weren't both catatonic. Yeah. We still don't know about the lady at the hospital. Was she restored? They still had memories missing, yeah. though. Is that all? Was she catatonic or she just, like, forgot a day or two? <laughs> she seemed catatonic, and they still had some things forgotten, so I don't think their memories were restored. Yeah, well, no, their memories weren't restored, but it's like, is... Why were they not catatonic and just had a few things missing? Like, I guess they just didn't get to suck their brains enough. It seemed like it just took a couple seconds with the dad, though. Yeah, because they were like, dad on, dad off. Just like, <laughs> dad on, dad off. <laughs> so, <laughs> My I, finger directly to the forehead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that's all it took, so... I don't know why they they put the finger in them and then dropped them to the ground like they were done with it. So I don't think they were stopped before anything. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they had main character syndrome. Yeah, it's like we don't want them to be catatonic, but it'd be funny if they forgot a few things. <laughs> it would be you know you know that Piper and Prue were just like lording over knowledge that Phoebe gave them to her like they're like eh, warlocks don't bleed idiot surprised you didn't know that yeah <laughs> I, uh, Phoebe we, we've like froze neighbor Dan and pricked him and you're like why is he not bleeding oh you're so dumb Phoebe yeah and I told you it's like it's because he's frozen stupid <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they see neighbor Dan is leaving. He doesn't even come to the door. He's just leaving. Yeah. And so uh, so Piper freezes his van to go and meet him. Meet the uh, stupid prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to check out this place because you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> He's their neighbor. It's not a far <laughs> trip for him to check. <laughs> She said she wanted to go. Just go knock on the door and say, hey, I'm ready to go now. <laughs> yeah. 
Especially because all of his, like, his thoughts this episode didn't seem angry that she keeps, like, bailing or doing all this stuff. It just kind of disappointed, like, oh, someday, you know? Yeah, someday and this I'll time get through like, that door. <laughs> <laughs> um, Prue gets flowers and a cell phone from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and she's like, ah, you're an idiot. <laughs> and, uh, and Phoebe calls Tokyo, I guess. She knows some random number and then speaks Japanese. Immediately, the phone call goes through and she starts speaking Japanese. I'm yeah, just going to assume... This is, again, assume... this super smart pipe or Phoebe episode where she, she can apparently speak Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to assume she was joking around and didn't dial a real number and just said, Konnichiwa. Like, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. You one would I hope. Know. I mean, that'd be the more sensible thing. The way the episode seemed to be playing it though is like that she somehow knew someone in Japan but, and called yeah. them and knows Japanese. How does she know this random Japanese number? <laughs> so at the hospital, uh Misha Collins and Phoebe reconnect and he's like, I think I saw you at the park. Why would he forget this? <laughs> yeah, this is after their memories were working again. And they both act kind of like, huh, do I know you? <laughs> you guys had a big conversation. And this is when he suddenly woke up in a park with his dad not, 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 bleh, can't talk anymore. With his dad not catatonic anymore. <laughs> I think you'd remember that. <laughs> hey, you were the girl who was there when my dad was suddenly okay again. <laughs> yeah, they just have like a bunch of like memory pollen floating around that slowly kind of make their memories fuzzy <laughs> like why is why would he forget that yeah be i'd be sense. worried about their minds at this point mm -hmm. and he gets arrested for breaking that tablet he doesn't even remember it like they're like you're going downtown buddies i didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> he calls phoebe an angel and then mm. she goes oh i can show you an angel <laughs> Because <laughs> no thanks. You're, you're playing making one of those for way too long. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, you're making it sound like a threat. I could show you an angel. <laughs> kind of did sound like a threat. She, well, she just said I can introduce you to one sometime. But yeah, maybe that's a euphemism for I will kill you. <laughs> that's why. That's how he became an angel on Supernatural. <laughs> it was kind of funny him talking about angels a lot, and then went on to play an angel for eight nine years however long he was on the show <laughs> yeah I mean, he lasted for a while like past let's that. see he was introduced in season eight i think right and was it eight no. no maybe it was earlier than that using the show before it got bad <laughs> oh i don't remember what season he, he was on nearly a decade wasn't he yeah maybe a decade nearly mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, he's played an angel for a long time, and I will say this, uh, in Supernatural's favor, he got to be a better actor since Charmed, <laughs> because he was very green in this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that's the end of the episode. He goes to jail forever. <laughs> what did uh, what'd you think, Phelan? Uh, I thought the follow-up was better where he escapes jail by slowly walking out, and they just shrug. <laughs> <laughs> can't do anything about mm. it, he's... Well, he's over there now. And then the Charmed Ones try to catch him in their jeep or whatever and drive past him. Where'd he go? <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it's a mixed episode. It's mostly still better for Charmed. <laughs> um, the, the demon effects are stupid and wonky. <laughs> the sound effects are bad for that, too. Uh, it's interesting seeing a good version of Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why Piper and Prue were so dumb at parts of this, though. That was kind of weird. Yeah, they were particularly dumb this episode, and they're usually not the dumb ones. It's, yeah. it's usually Phoebe, Piper sometimes. Prue usually was a little bit smarter than this. Yeah, Prue was her cat, or Prue. Piper was callous as her usual self in some parts of this. She, she still had moments, though, that made her human versus less <laughs> uh, less so in other episodes. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, oh, that's so Piper at the beginning of this episode where Prue's like, I think Jack's a demon. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on this date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really focused on like the Piper dating scenarios early on. 
it was really like all the love triangle stuff with her and Leo and uh, and neighbor Dan and all that. Like they were very focused on her love life, and like Phoebe was a lot of like love them and leave them's up until mm-hmm. she got the Cole storyline. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess with Prue too. After Andy, she just couldn't have a long term <laughs> love interest. It's funny because there is like there's two plots in here about dates, but it doesn't feel as overbearing as later Charon would make the date things like. Like, well, they also had to do with, like, de- fighting demons and warlocks and stuff. Like, yeah. they tied it into the story. So it was like they're trying to juggle a normal life and their their life with supernatural stuff. And sometimes they kind of <laughs> But they were explain. still doing it. <laughs> that was the thing. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like they were just pushing everything aside for it. Mm-hmm. So. They left the house several times. <laughs> <laughs> they did, which you didn't see that much later. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. This was a, I, I would say, a classic filler episode. It is not a <laughs> classic episode of Charmed, um, uh, but it is. Uh, it's fine. It's got some of that early charm to it. Charm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's interesting seeing young uh, Misha Collins. Uh, Dean Norris was also fun to see. The effects were wonky, especially the cat thing was very bizarre. Mm-hmm. Um, but someday it was like entertaining. I'll, someday I'll be in the same shot as that cat. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> you'll never see that cat, Dan. You'll never see that cat and you'll be dead. <laughs> He'll make sure you knew too much about that cat that he wasn't really there. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was it was fine. I would I would say like... <laughs> Air on the side of good, I guess, like versus intolerable. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one last question, Phelan. Who's the Margoyle? Hmm. <sighs> the standout loser of the episode. <laughs> standout loser. Uh, it's a tough call between Piper and Neighbor Dan, I think. <laughs> <laughs> elaborate <laughs> well piper because she's off in piper land at points answering the door for neighbor dan and ignoring the plot and also being very <laughs> dumb about potential warlocks and stuff <laughs> also she's very dumb about the hand pricking thing i feel like piper is gonna be your margoyle for most episodes i know i think like, Dan's dumb because he forgot he was in the house earlier in this episode. <laughs> That's why it's a tough call here. <laughs> He's neighbor so Dan, dumb. I don't think neighbor Dan was ever smart. He's always dumb in this episode. Uh, I think for the hand pricking thing and the fact that she acts like sh- she knew all along and proves the dumb one later, it's got to go to Piper. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good choice. Uh, I think my, I have, I have a, I was conflicted on my Margoyle. (laughs) Um, It was a a tie between uh, Jeff, the mortuary twin, (laughs) and uh, Misha Collins (laughs) as these standout losers. Um, Because Jeff, the mortuary twin, just like, what is he even doing? Like, why is he going to his brother's job? He's clearly not very good at pretending he knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Doesn't well, even dress or act like him. Was it? Either. Yeah. To what end? We never see him again. What a weirdo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess he died. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, Misha Collins for constantly sauntering out his his brilliant plan of just walk in and smash the tablet. <laughs> and I got a gun twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His plans are not very good, but somehow always benefit him. (laughs) Smashing the tablet is just insane that that worked (laughs) out. Uh, So it's Misha Misha Collins in the end? Yeah, I think Misha Collins has to be. I was torn, but Misha Collins, I think, was dumber. (laughs) All right. Is there anything else about this episode that you want to say? Um, well, I don't know if they're warlocks or not. Are they frozen? What? (laughs) They're not bleeding. Are they a warlock? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) Surprised you didn't know that, dum-dum. Yeah. (laughs) 
All right. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Charmed Rewind, uh, or if you would like to complain about our supernatural bashing, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can like subscribe or review at whatever platform you're enjoying this on. Uh, you can find us in audio form at anger.fm. Uh, also iTunes, as we discovered. Uh, you can also find us on youtube.com slash movie nights the series uh, if you'd like to participate in polls or just support us monetarily uh, you can find my stuff on patreon at patreon.com slash movie nights or phalen at patreon.com slash phalus thanks to peter hunter for editing the episode for us uh, all of the episodes for us doing the great carman theme in charmed hard with a vengeance <laughs> You can find him at Pretor Hunter on Twitter. You can see him do uh, chicken nugget recipes. <laughs> um, uh, ep- uh, do videos where he takes the verbs out of songs. <laughs> uh, various uh, weird things like that. I think it was verbs. I don't know. He takes certain words out. <laughs> you can find all that and more at Pretor Hunter. Uh, Phelan, what hashtags? Hashtag lazy museum. <laughs> Hashtag blight at the museum. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag mortuary twin. <laughs> Hashtag smart baby. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, we'll see you Charmanders next time. Bye.